My first question will be, what is your opinion on BC Summers, what the state should do, where they're headed with the whole program? Um, if you could just share your opinion. Sure. And you'll just look right here. Okay. Yes. All right. You know, you never sell anything when it's rocked back on its heels. It's a fire sale, and we have to actually look at how it's going to affect us. Right now, rushing off to sell just Santee Cooper is going to leave us with $5.5 billion more debt that we're not even talking about right now, and that's for you and I to have to pay. That's not any, there's no one else to pay for that. So it's not the right decision right now. And that said, I don't think that the government does a lot of things very well, and the private sector could do a good job. But we have got to get it ready to sell or we're going to end up paying more than we're paying now. Our electricity rates to flip the same light switch on today cost some of the highest in the nation versus what it cost before this whole debacle got started in 2007. Ms. Templeton, um, President Donald Trump's budget takes a similar approach when it comes to the MOX facility as his predecessor. Uh, what is your position on MOX and uh, if elected to governor, how would you work with the federal government um, to further SRS's mission in the MOX facility? You know, the great thing about this is that I actually worked with the federal government, or against it probably better said, when Governor Haley was, was here, and I was in charge of DHA. So we were, we were with SRS. We were trying to make it an economic driver with the lab. And of course, MOX is necessary to, to move out all of this Cold War plutonium and waste. Um, we have absolutely got to, for this area and for the entire state of South Carolina, address it and continue to push the federal government to do what their job is to do. So is it your view that they haven't fulfilled their obligation? I, I don't think you would find a whole lot of people that would say they fulfill their obligation, not just in MOPS, but over and over and over again, <laughs> especially as it relates to SRS. We were promised things. We've done our part of the job. It's a bad deal for us. And it's why when I was at DHEC, I pushed back and we, we invoked some of the some of the penalties against them. Okay, that wasn't my question. I was yep, just attack on. Go right ahead uh, Governors D.L. McMaster are both very big about cybersecurity um, and the cyber industry. It's expanding a lot across the river in Augusta. Um, but, you know, if you were uh, elected, what opportunities could you see for the future of South Carolina uh, in the cyber industry? I think it's great that the cybersecurity industry is going to be right here. I don't like that it's in our backyard. I want it to be in our yard. And importantly, when I worked for Governor Haley on her cabinet, when one of the other agencies got hacked, DHEC got hacked. But you never heard about it because we actually kept all of your vital information, the genesis of all identity, the nuclear schematics, we kept it safe because we were ready for a cyber attack and participated a great deal in that entire initiative. So I understand the industry, I've, I've worked with it as a government employee, but more importantly as a private sector employee, and we have a lot that we can leverage now. Thank you. Wonderful.